Ryan is Julia Morgan and I'm a freshman here at Marshall University and today I'm going to be teaching you how to fill out a scorecard for baseball. Alright, so I assume that a lot of you watch sports and have been to a baseball game and most of you are probably like me when I was growing up and could never really get into it, um, just found it boring. So today I'll be teaching you how to fill out, a, fill out and read a scorecard. I think this is important because baseball has been around for so long and it has had a huge impact, impact on sports as a whole and I don't think it really gets the recognition it deserves. Um, so growing up, like I said, I could never really get into baseball. I just found it boring, um, didn't really pay attention when I went to baseball games, but um, my dad had me start filling out and reading scorecards with him. So that kept me interested in the game and once I got the hang of it I really liked it and I wanted to go and fill out a scorecard for every game I went to. Um, so yeah I would like to teach you. Um, so to start I will tell you the position abbreviations um, because that will make filling out a scorecard and reading a scorecard way easier when you know um, what each position stands for and it's a big part in keeping your scorecard organized. Um, so when um, doing position abbreviations, it's easier to use numbers except for designated hitter because um, as you'll see when I get into that, um, some of the, if you use number, if, I mean, if you use letters, some of them match up with um, some of the plays. So it just helps it keep it more organized and keep, you can tell the difference easier. Um, so first we have pitcher, which is abbreviated as one, catcher is two, first baseman is three, second baseman is four, third baseman is five, shortstop is six, left field is seven, center field is eight, right field is nine, and then there's designated hitter, which like I said, isn't you can't do as a number, so it's just DH. Um, next, I will go over some popular plays and their abbreviations. This is important because you need to know each play to be able to fill out your scorecard correctly and accurately. All right. So a single is abbreviated as 1B, um, and a single means the batter was able to advance to first base. Double is abbreviated as 2B. Um, that means that the the uh, batter was able to advance to second base. Triple, which is 3B, and that means they were advanced to, they advanced to third base. Home run is abbreviated as HR, um, which means they advanced all the bases and they scored. Uh, strikeout swing, which is abbreviated as K, uh, that means the batter misses the ball three times and is now out. Um, stolen base, which is SB, that means the player advances bases without getting caught. So that means they, let's say, for example, they went from first base to second base while the pitcher was distracted and were able to steal that base. All right. All right. Next, I will show you how to read and write your own scorecard. Um, you will start by, by writing the player's name number and position. In pro baseball, it's projected on the scoreboard at the beginning of the game, um, in between each inning, and once a person's coming up to bat, their name, number, and position is also projected as they're approaching. Um, so this is an example from the Cleveland Indians in the first inning. Um, let me move this a little closer so you can see it better. So in this scenario, um, the hitter is Grady Sizemore. He's number 24, so you'll put his name under lineup, number 24, and he's a center fielder, which, like I said, is abbreviated as 8, and that'll also be projected for you in case you forget. Um, so you'll put 8 for position. So on a 3-2 pitch, he flies out to right field. So as you can see, these little boxes, those top three boxes are balls 
um, and the bottom two are strikes. So you get four balls before you get to walk to first base. You get two strikes, and then on your third one, you're out, like everyone knows in baseball. Um, so he was on his last last pitch. He either was able to, was going to be able to walk, or was going to be able to, um, or was or was going to be out. So he hit the ball. He flies it out to right field, and um, it got caught by the right fielder. So nothing happens. He's out. Um, and then you'll write a nine in the little diamond because the right fielder, which is abbreviated as nine, caught the ball and was the one to take him out. And since he is now out, you'll move on to the next person at bat. All right. So this one is Jason Michaels. He's number eight and he's a left fielder. So again, you'll write Michael's last name, their number, number eight, and their position, which is left fielder, so it's seven. All right, so in this scenario, after one strike pitch, Michael's flies out to left field and is now out. So you will write a seven on the diamond and move on. So, so he had one strike pitch, so you'll draw, you'll put a cross in the strike, um, and then on his second pitch, he hit the ball, the left fielder caught it. So again, like the last person, he's out. So you'll write a seven in the diamond since the left fielder caught it. Um, and you'll move on to the next person. So keep in mind at this point that Cleveland now has two outs. And in baseball, you know the rule, three strikes, you're out. So the next person to be out will end this inning altogether. Luckily, the next person at bat is Casey Blake. Um, he's number one and he's a third baseman. So uh, once again, you'll write Blake, number one, and then a third baseman, which is five. So on a 2-2 two -two pitch, he hits a single. Um, that means he is now advanced to first base. So you'll have the two, the two balls, the two strikes, and then he had, he had advanced to first base. So you'll draw a line from home base to first base. Just ignore those two right now because those aren't part of part of his hit. So you'll draw a line from home base to first base and you'll write one B. Okay? And that's all you can do with that one right now. So we'll go back to that. All right. The next person is Travis Hafner. He's number 48 and he's a designated hitter. So again, you'll write Hafner, he's number 48, designated hitter, so DH. And on a 2-2 pitch, he hits a double and advances to second base, which advances Blake, our last pitcher, or I mean our last hitter, to third base. So again, he had two balls, two strikes, so and he advanced to double to second base. So you'll draw a line, when someone advances to second base, you'll draw a line from first, from home to first, and then first to second, and then you'll draw, you'll write 2B on the line between first and second base. And since Blake had advanced to third base, um, he had started on first, he advanced to third since Hafner went to second, you'll have to draw a line from second base to third base. And if you go back, to Blake's. You know how we started from home to first and that was where we ended it? Well now, since since Hafner went to second base and Blake is now on third base, you'll have to draw a line from from second to or from from first to second and second to third and just leave it at that. All right. Alright, so now Blake is on third base and Hafner's on second base. The next person at bat is Johnny Peralta. He's number two and he's a shortstop. So again, Peralta, number two, shortstop, which is six. And he gets four balls and walks. So he he had three balls, fourth hit, it was another ball. So that means he gets to walk to first base. So you'll draw a line from home base to first base and write BB, base on balls. 
Okay. So, with the bases loaded, the next person at bat is Ryan Garko. He's number 25, and he's a first baseman. So again, you write Garko, number 25, first baseman, three. With one ball and two strikes, he flies out to left field. So he had one ball out of three, two strikes out of three. Um, and the next ball he hit, it flies out to left field. So again, like we saw earlier, you'll mark the diamond with a seven and it'll be at the end of that. So since that is the third out um, of the inning, that means it is now over because we had two outs earlier in the inning. So once the inning is over, um, you'll just draw a line underneath the last person to go, the last person out, and then you'll just move on to the next box next to it. So, in conclusion, I hope this information has taught you how to read a scorecard and, with practice, be able to fill out your own one day. And I hope that makes attending baseball games or knowing information about baseball a lot more fun, a lot easier, a lot lighthearted. Um, so, yeah, thank you.